Hello everyone and welcome to another video. After watching Durklink excavate Thunder Rock before beating it, I wanted to try something like that as well. So today I will attempt to excavate Crazy Castle before the deadline at the end of year 4. I don't just mean removing the hilt that the castle is built on, no, I want to dig out the entire park to the lowest possible land level of minus 9 meters. This will cost about 1.16 million euros and we have 4 years to acquire all that money, so let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is remove all the existing path and scenery as the scenery will only be in the way and the path layout is terrible. We also need to set research funding to maximum and only research stalls for the first year. To be able to make that much money that quickly you need to charge for the rides and you need access to the cash machine so that guests can spend hundreds or even thousands of euros at your park. The earliest you can unlock the cash machine in Crazy Castle is in October year 1, for which we need these research settings. To get as many guests as possible we want to be running all advertisements at all times. For the free ride ticket and food coupon ads you need an opened ride and stall that you can advertise, so before we start building optimized coasters we will build one stall and one merry-go-round near the entrance. After we have bought the ads, it's time to start building hyper efficient coasters. Of all the coaster types we start out with, the one with the cheapest micro coaster is the junior, so we start with a bunch of tiny junior coasters in a row. Even though we could charge more, for now we're going to charge 5 euros for every ride. This is so that guests don't become broke and leave the park before we unlock the cash machine. After we're done with the juniors, it's time for some other coasters that have higher stats so that we can charge more for them later. The 4x4 Steel Wild Mouse is great for this as it is very cheap and has a very small footprint as even the Q-Line and Exit Path fit within the 4x4 area. The side of the hill isn't great for building pre-built coasters on so it's a nice spot for a custom wooden Wild Mouse coaster. Now there's nothing more to do for a while other than building more coasters and keeping the ads running. To support all the guests we're going to get later it's a good idea to build some more coasters with a higher maximum throughput. My small compact wooden coaster design is great for this as it is fairly cheap, has good stats and can process about 3 or 4 times as many guests per hour as the junior and the wild mouse. We're going to keep building more wild mouse coasters as well, mainly for the soft guest cap. One wooden coaster attracts almost twice as many guests as one wild mouse, but it is much bigger so the wild mouse coasters are much more space efficient for getting as many guests as possible. Advertising does ignore the soft guest cap, but if you get more guests in your park than the cap you still lose out on a lot of the natural guest generation, which is still quite a significant part. It's now near the end of year 1 and we really need the cash machine. It turns out that 5 euros per ride was still a bit too much and our guest count has been stagnating just under 2000 as early guests are now broke and going home. This is more than the 1500 guests we need to beat the goal, but it's not nearly enough to make all the money that we need. On the 23rd of October we finally unlock the cash machine and you're damn right that we're going to spam it absolutely everywhere. Now that the guests going broke is no longer an issue, it's time to raise the ticket prices. The junior coasters can go up to 6 bucks and the wooden and wild mouse coasters can go up to 10. We could still charge a little bit more, but these prices will be good for the first year and 5 months, which means that we don't need to micromanage the prices as much and we can spend our attention on other things. As a result of these price increases we really start to make some serious money. The most we made in a single month in the first year from ride tickets was about 18,000 which isn't nearly enough. However, in March year 2, the first month with a cash machine, we already made 42,000 euros which still isn't enough. 
In August of the same year, now with many more rides and guests, we made over 70,000 euros, which is heading in the right direction. August year 2 is also the point where we need to start refurbishing some of the early rides so that we can keep charging our insanely high ticket prices. The refurbish ride option in OpenRCT2 is basically the same as selling the ride and rebuilding it, except you only have to press one button. The ride does have to be closed and you're charged the same amount of money as it would have cost you otherwise, but it is much faster. From now on we will need to keep refurbishing rides that cross the 1 year and 5 months age mark. It's a fair bit of micromanagement, but it is absolutely worth it. In the meantime we just keep building more and more rides, like these two custom looping coasters. They both make a lot of money, especially the red one. Since we are making way more money than we can spend on rides now, we can start with excavating the park, as after all that's what we're trying to do. In year 3 we can just keep doing the same old thing. Constant advertising, building more rides, excavating some land and refurbishing old rides. When we get to removing the land below the junior coasters, we are hindered by their low support limit, so I think it's time to remove them. They have served us well, but with their low throughput and low ride ticket price, they weren't making us a lot of money anyway. Speaking of money, in October year 3 we made 117,000 euros, which is finally more than the average that we need. We also have more than 5,000 guests and are still gaining more. It's really nice that all guests don't mind spending their entire life savings on one trip to a theme park where almost all of the roller coasters are the exact same. In June year 4 I decided it was time to build a big awesome twister coaster. This baby can process up to 6000 guests per hour and guests will pay 20 bucks for it making it easily the most profitable ride in the park. Even though this coaster cost around 35,000 euros to build, it has already earned back its own construction cost just 3 months later in September. By this time we're making about 150,000 euros a month and we have become a millionaire. By half October with only 2 weeks left, the final stage of the challenge has begun. First we need to remove all the stalls as their support limit is preventing us from lowering the land all the way down to minus 9 meters. We also need to get rid of the wild mouse coasters as their support limit is also too low. And there we have it, a fully excavated crazy castle with more than 6700 guests, 999 park rating and more than 800,000 euros still in the bank. Challenge completed. We're not quite done yet though, as I think we should give this park a proper send off. With just a few days left before the deadline, we're going to turn Crazy Castle into Crazy Lake. On the 30th of October, it's time to remove most of the rides. Not all of them yet, as having a few rides operating is a very large part of the park rating and we do need that to be at least 600 to beat the scenario. On the 31st of October we count down the seconds and with about 9 seconds to go we remove all the path and the last remaining rides. Many guests are drowning every second and the guest count is dropping insanely fast. Will the day end before we have fewer than 1500 guests so that we don't fill the scenario? 3000 guests, 2500 guests, 2000, 1800, 1700, 1650, 1600 and with 1595 guests left we beat the scenario just in the nick of time. To illustrate how immensely close this was, only one tenth of a second later the guest count drops below 1500 and a few seconds later the park rating updates and drops all the way down to zero. So there we are, we just beat Crazy Castle with all the guests drowning in a lake in a fully excavated park while it was raining. I don't think I have ever beaten a scenario in a more ridiculous way. 
If you want to see the full playthrough, I have linked it in the description. I didn't record any sound with it, but you can use it to verify that I didn't use any cheats if you want to. If you have another interesting idea in the same vein of this challenge, please leave a comment below. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.